This is Twit. You know what our lead story should be? Goodbye, Flock. Flock oh you. We uh, never got to say hello to Flock. Yeah, Google says, and I think this, this is really an interesting story, said yesterday... They were going to replace, as you remember, they had announced no more third-party cookies. Everybody hates them. Good. That's fine. But we do need some way to sell uh, targeted advertising. So we're going to have the Federated Learning of Cohorts, which was a kind of retronym, awkward retronym, because everything in this area had birds, bird-themed. So this flock would essentially watch what you do do what you just the same way as Google always did but instead of having a unique identifier for you they would put you in a cohort of people with similar interests and we they never really explained how big this cohort would be but the thing that I think upset people was then when when you go to a website your flock cohort would be sent to the website like at, at, you know hi here's Leo he's 3994-7 and people didn't really like that. It wasn't clear how big the cohort would be. Uh, I think there's also, it's funny because they're in trouble with the EU. <laughs> the, so Axel Springer, our favorite uh, yes, heavy, yes. has sued them for ending cookies. Yeah, yeah. They're, Springer <laughs> is the one who led the fight against Google, used their political clout, got the EU to go after Google. Everybody's screaming, privacy, privacy, dot and shuts, dot and shuts. Get rid of cookies, they are evil. And then, and then Axel Springer says... Uh oh, we can't target any ads. No, don't get rid of cookies. That's it's very bad. confusing. The EFF oh. did not like Flock because there was this concern that, uh, as always with these things that are so called anonymized, it's possible to de anonymize. And they were a little worried that if people started to combine your Flock ID with other profile information, they might actually be able to figure out who's who and all of that. So Google has. I think in response to the EU, I don't know. I don't know really. In response to privacy advocates, um, yeah, I think there was a lot of reasons because a lot of people were unhappy with Flock. And yeah, so and they're coming up with topics. Oh. Topics. It was just a proposal. I mean, they never implemented it. It was only yeah. in beta. Right. So now it's topics. Topics. Which is topics. Topics. Are... So Ben Galbraith, who's direct senior director for product, acknowledged privacy concerns with Flock, said topics was easier for users to understand. It would also make it easier for Google to remove sensitive topics from being uh, targeted. So then, so topics um, lets advertisers target online users based on a topic they might be interested in, uh, fitness or travel. Chrome does this automatically. Now, it, it's not, by the way, this is all proposal, not implemented yet. Chrome will generate five topics based on your browser history with, and this is important, participating websites. It then mm. sends three topics, one from each of the past three weeks, to participating sites to share with their advertising partners. Topics like Flock are not permanent. In this case, they're stored for three weeks, then deleted. There are 350 topics, but but Google's saying by doing this, instead of saying what your interests are in Flock, we're saying what your interests are, but we can also just ignore things like, um, I don't know, whatever is, you know, mental health issues. My searches for guns. mental health resources. Yeah, guns, and that kind of thing. So topic data is stored on your device. Manicures. Manicures. Yeah, they. I, well, that, that this will be a good test. Not if I, sensitive. If I get a bunch of manicure information in my Instagram feed, I think we'll know. Um, yeah. <laughs> so it's never stored on Google, unlike third-party tracking cookies, which allow people, companies to use tracking pixels, so they can go cross-site. This can't really go cross-site. Uh, you will be unlike Flock. You'll be able to see what topics you are being. To, you know, flogged with they're being sent to sites. If you don't like a topic, Ooh. I think I like this. You this can is, remove this it. This is great. Yeah, yeah. You can say, you know be. what? I'm not interested in tennis rackets. I am interested I looked in pickleball once for rackets. my for my wife, and I don't play tennis rackets. Yeah, I'm too old. I play pickleball, and and yeah. Uh, and Google says users will be able to disable the feature completely, which is really interesting. I think Google huh. does. Google wants to maintain its ad model, 
but they really do want to respond to people's privacy concerns. Yeah, it's a way to this add. It's a, it's a value add. Device. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Ant. So you said this is stored on the device, and yeah. Chrome is just reading it yes. that way. Well, Chrome generates it and then stores it in its you know store. Okay. It and stores it in pocket. wherever it stores cookies. It's back pocket. It's yes. Back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> it's back pocket. So, but it's stored locally on your device. It's not sent up to the cloud like associated okay. with your IP address. Correct. So they announced. Yeah, that's right. It, that's the key, right? It's anonymized. Yeah. Um, and although they it also is in a way associated with your IP address, because when you go, let's say you go to um, uh, what's the you know some bass fishing place, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and it sends out let's you know you go to Dick's Sporting Goods uh, website, and it's it's going to say well here's the three things here's the three topics Leo's interested in, um, but but Dick's is getting that plus my IP address, so that's why they oh, have to right. expire them on a regular basis, right? So they can't start building a picture of you. The other interesting thing here and is what could be that, done... Go ahead, Stacey, sorry. Oh, I was going to say, Google says they also are going to send fake topics to about 5% of the websites <laughs> to make sure Clever. the topic generation is actually random, which I thought was kind of like, mm. does that mean like 5% of your ads aren't... Are they going to give people a discount of 5%? Like that... Oh, from I, the I get where they're coming from, but it, it's kind of weird. I have, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a little, I'm a, of course, um, I've, I've been a little skeptical because Google has its own way of tracking who you are and, and all of that. But I think that Google is really is, I'm going to give them credit for trying to find a system that users can tolerate that gives the advertisers yeah. some of the information. Yeah. Um, Which might actually give you more relevant advertising. Here, yeah. Here's a question. Do you, did, did you receive anything whether, whether an advertiser can do or not? That's how it got abused on Facebook. Right. If, if, if I if I decide I want to advertise this thing, but not to people who like hip hop as a way, you know, this job as a way to yeah, not have kind of redlining, movie, in other words, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and the not was an issue uh, there, which I think was the primary one. I don't think that Google um, can control the not because they're going to send here's a here's on the Google it's, it's keyword such a small blog. sample. They're going to okay. send out, you know, this, you know, Jeff's interest in autos and vehicles, books and literature, comics and animation, rock music, team sports. There's no reason that Dick Sports couldn't say, "Oh, rock, I don't want anybody's interest in rock," and just say, you know, we won't advertise to that person. The point that Google's making on this diagram is you don't know, you can't tell what's in that cookie. It's a, you know, it's code. But you can see very clearly because Chrome will show this what your what interest is sending to advertisers, and you see that X, you can delete them. So I think this is I I like this uh, solution. Let me here's Google's could be one minute video to describe Ooh. this here. Um, are you getting uh, audio? Uh, you didn't test your audio, Leo. Mm. Left, left, right, right. Mm. Left, 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 right, right. Yeah, so maybe there's no audio in it. We we heard the TikTok. Oh, okay. Hmm. Introducing Topics. Thank privacy you. Sandbox's newest proposal to help you preserve your privacy online while enabling sites to show. With Topics, your browser will note topics related to participating sites you visit. Let me Pastor, do this. I'm a trained professional. For example, if you've recently <laughs> visited sites about sports, the browser may note that sports is one of your topics. Well, your cheating. topics you easy will help determine the ads you see. And a site won't need to know who you are to show you an ad about sports. They just know you like it. You have no control. Oh, sorry. You do have control over your topics. And you can remove topics in the ah. browser. <laughs> or you can turn them off altogether. I'm cold reading it, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> With topics, the specific sites you visited are no longer shared across the web, like they might have been with third-party cookies. Third-party evil cookies. We're testing topics soon to get feedback from the industry so that it works together with all of the other privacy sandbox proposals to protect your privacy and keep the Internet a valuable source of free information for now and the future. And that's the balancing act. They want to support advertising, is. which is what supports free Internet content, but they also want you to feel comfortable with the information they share. I don't know. Negatives? Stacy, can you see a negative here? Um, no. I mean, I think it's mostly positive, especially if they make it easy for you to look, because then you can also, I mean, the negative for an advertiser is I could go in and I could be like, I'm so sick of seeing all these high price coats because I keep buying them. So then I'm like, I am not interested in high fashion. And then I would stop buying high fashion because yeah. of advertising. 
Google but that's has, really has, not a has problem published, uh, interestingly, on GitHub, um, the uh, details about the API. If you wanted to, if you want to start getting ready as a as a web uh, site designer to to support this, um, I, I think it's. Um, I, I think there's a further like opportunity it. is to let me pick my topics. Oh, isn't that interesting? And tell you, I yeah. want the car. But yeah. you might. I mean, I will say that as I. So especially because it's short range, like three weeks, let's just go with every time I binge watch a show, I start Googling like mad to hear like, right. who's the actors? Where have I seen this Reaction. person? Yep. Right? Me too. So it yeah. captures, it captures that, which is a very fleeting interest, but might be interesting for an advertiser. Oh. Um, and then it goes away when I'm probably no longer interested in it. If I had to manage that, I'd just be like, oh, I'm interested in IOT and close. But the interesting thing too here That's, is Google's always always sussed out topicality right from the very very beginning of advertising. So how are they going to know an expensive coat site? I guess that's pretty obvious. They're coats and they're expensive. But how, you know, what, how does the topicality uh, determined is going to be interesting to see because we've never had transparency on that before. Why this ad always, appeared on this almost, page? It would almost uh, if make you it, are, it almost makes it look like they have uh, access to the history, even though they say they're not looking at your history. Of which the user or the site, and the user. But they Ooh. they are very obviously looking at your history. I mean, if I look at like my Google News Feed, for example, mm -hmm. I mean, all I have to do is search like one freaking. I don't know, like hot tub chemicals, and for the rest of my yeah. life, I'm reading stories about hot tubs. So I yeah, assume that is annoying. This it's going to be built on. I mean, that's easy for Google, right? Yeah, it, yeah. It may not be accurate, so I can go in and be like, "Please stop showing me ads for hot tubs." I mean, <laughs> Google. Look, Google's not going to make privacy advocates and advertisers happy. So it's a it's like any compromise. There's it's mm -hmm. not going to be perfect. As a, I I think as a user, I'm satisfied with this. Will advertisers feel like they're getting enough information? I mean, honestly, if if your dick's sporting goods and it says you're interested, I don't know, pickleball is probably too granular. That's the problem. So it might say you're interested in racket sports. Then they, I mean, maybe they'd like more granularity. Uh, I don't know. I well, haven't heard from advertisers. I don't know. Hmm. The other interesting piece here is is the correlations that occur. I remember early on, um, I'm forgetting the name of the company that was bought by AOL long ago. They found, for example, that um, service uh, people in, in people in the army and navy and so on uh, correlated very highly with big screen TVs. <clears throat> so you might be wanting to advertise a big screen TV, but you go toward military interest or vice versa, right? And and that's because you have your own data as an advertiser that says these are the, these are the useful correlations that we have. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, that's been mm -hmm. happening for a while, so yeah, I don't have issues with that. I mean, okay, I, I think I was, we've I was got like, to. But we're cool with that, right? <laughs> right, we 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 are, but we got to think about, um, you know, how does this? Let's let's. Here, here's the test. I think, if I'm a job site and I'm advertising jobs, am I using some topics to get rid of oh people who may be less desirable for my employer? People who are on a culture fit. Um, yeah, right, and 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 so that's gonna Google's gonna have to test out. And they're good at this, right? Going back to Matt Cutts, they're good at, at sussing out bad uses of things, but far better than Facebook ever was, um, of seeing how could this system get misused. And and it, it will be. It surely will be. No, no doubt about it. Okay. Anyway, I, I, topic. I, com I commend them for trying to find something that makes people happy. Uh, and I'm sure the, I haven't seen the EFF yet. Let me see if the EFF is already up in arms over this. <laughs> well, but also the, the Washington Post and the New York Times, I put in, the, in this tweet, it's the, rather than saying a new way to target ads, a new way to track you. Yeah. Yes. Well, but well remember, I don't think that's a problem. I think it's important to explain to people that these companies are tracking them. <gasps> I have a really interesting tracking story, but it's not on the thing. But let me just say this. Talk about it. Uh, it and then let's do that. But it's not tracking. The common person's understanding. Yeah, it's not, it's right. not I, I tracking. I disagree with you on the, the New York Times headline scaring. Well, but, is, but well, is let it, Leo defend me. I'm going to defend you. because <laughs> so, <third>, so cookies, <laughs> as Google pointed out, track you in the sense that you... The Facebook like button sees multiple sites that you've been on. This is a very different system 
where the Chrome browser, which sees those sites anyway, then extracts from that an interest, five interests, which you can see what they are, you can turn them off, and sends that to the website. That is not the same thing at all. That's not really no, tracking you, not. in my opinion. Now, maybe, do you think, Stacey, consumers will see that mechanism, that the browser then says, this is what Media you're maker. interested in? Uh, is that Will that be seen as tracking? I don't feel like that's tracking. It's not following you in any way. Anytime something pops up and tells the average person, hey, I think you like this, or I know you like this, yeah. right? And they're correct. They don't like that. That creeps people out. Yeah. They don't care that it follows them other places. That's a real subtle mm -hmm. distinction most people don't care about. They should, because that's the problem. That's, yeah, why we are, I mean, that's why we don't like third-party cookies. But how sophisticated does someone have to be to, so, okay, can I tell you my tracking story? Because I, I, I think this yeah, is interesting please. and it ties to this. So I read it, my daughter is a sophomore in high school. So she's looking, we're about to start the whole college thing. So we, we got a book by a Wall Street Journal reporter about like getting money for college. And in that book, he talked about how colleges are now using pixel trackers on emails to track when applicants open their emails, how quickly they respond, how many times they open it. And they well, use that information. I thought that was old news. Okay. But they use that information for in getting a sense of how interested someone is in the school and for allocating scholarship money. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh crap, I gotta get my daughter Proton Mail because I don't want I don't want her casual searches or interests in something to cost us money, right? Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. so I think it's old news that yes, there are pixel trackers in email, right? We might all be like, Yeah, 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 I know. But when you think about how those are being used, it's kind of like, holy crap. Yeah. Uh, in data. ways that might surprise you. It's well, and data. that's what I mean. Like people are not sophisticated or it's not even not sophisticated. We just don't think everything through to that level because my God, we'd have, we sound yeah. like paranoid, crazy folk, I guess. Right. But anyway, that's, you know, that's I, why I've been thinking. Yeah. I, I, I think you've got normals, a point, Stacey. Air quotes, Whatever. normals. We do sound paranoid when we start talking about privacy and security, even though it's pretty blatant what's going on. I think Google has an opportunity here. Um, and this is me just speculating. <laughs> to, to to your point, Leo, about about the awareness of people, and to your point, Stacy and and Ant, about um, the, the 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 nervousness is to is to be very strong of saying control your advertising, control what topics you have, control what topics you don't get. I've always argued. I wanted on on the sites that I, that I ran when I ran them. I wanted the opportunity for somebody to say, "Don't show me this advertiser," and sell that data to the advertiser. These people don't want to see you. You figure out why, but but that's valuable. You're wasting your money trying to get to these people. So stop going mm -hmm. to those people, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. uh, I think there's an opportunity to become, uh, I hate using this word, very proactive uh, and, and allow uh, users to, in fact, not just feel in control, but be in control. It's going to generate yeah. more data that is actually valuable because it comes from, it's a permission system that says, yeah, I am looking for a car right now. No, I was looking for my daughter. She already bought the car. Stop with the car ads, please. Stop wasting your money and my eye space. There's a lot of opportunity there, I think. They won't do it. <laughs>